Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Hello, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome in. Welcome in. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. Welcome. Welcome in. Welcome in. Please share. Good morning. Good morning. It's Sunday. This is the day the Lord has made. I shall rejoice and be glad in it. I encourage you to do the same. Amen. <clears throat> Come on in. Come on in. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Sunday. Good morning, good morning. <clears throat> good morning, Saints. We're gonna go ahead and and get started. Um, I just wanna first off uh, explain to you all what's going on with Impact right now. We're in the process of transitioning from renting into ownership of our own space. So at this time we are going virtual uh, once things change, we will definitely give you an update on that. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. Welcome. Come on in. As I was saying, we're transitioning from renting to ownership. So we'll be going virtual until uh, announced further. I'm going to get ready to go ahead and uh, start. I'm going to start with prayer. Father God, we thank you right now, Lord. We thank you for this wonderful day that you have made, Lord God. Father God, we thank you, Lord, that you saw fit to wake us this morning, Father God. Father Lord, we say hallelujah to your name, O oh God. Father Lord, we say hallelujah to your name, O oh King. Father God, we lift you on this day, Father God, Lord. Father God, right now, I just even ask, Lord, that you would uh, you would uh, decrease me as I increase you, Father God. Uh, let me get out of the way. Let me be all the way out of the way and that your will would be done father god that your will be prayer god lord i ask lord that you would um incline every ear father god to uh hear what you would have your people to hear on today and to understand on today father god lord god i ask uh lord that this word father god would uh do as you desire to set out to do and it's your mighty name jesus we pray amen <clears throat> all righty good morning saints so um the title for today's message is take off the fat and put on the hat and so of course you see when the title f-a-t is an acronym and the hat h-a-t is an acronym as well and so i want to i want to just jump right in and get into it 
um, the FAT, the F-A-T, and that stands for Faith Altering Thoughts. Um, and what I mean by that is things that reduce our relationship with God by some form of persuasion, flattery, or despair. Uh, I'll give you a, a few examples of that. Um, in Genesis, we had when the serpent compelled Eve to eat the fruit, to consider the fruit. Um, you know, the conversation was more or less that you would not die and that, that there was more that was in store by going against God. That uh, this was an opportunity that had to be seized. Another example is David. David lusting after Uriah's wife, driving him to ultimately um, have him killed so he could uh, take him, Bathsheba to be his wife. <clears throat> and Peter, when he began to sink, went out on the water. So what happens is, um, and understand that this message is not for uh, the unbeliever. These are for the, this message is for the saints. Sometimes, sometimes we can have some unbelief. Uh, we don't necessarily say that, but uh, sometimes there are situations where certain topics or certain things come about and there is a, uh, a deferred hope, a, uh, a unsurety. Um, and so we can be vulnerable to um, to listening to the wrong voice. Most of the time, if you look at everything, how things are marketed, how things are presented, most of the time things are presented via fear. <clears throat> uh, you see on the TV where the, uh, the car salesman, you know, he persuades you to buy the vehicle. Hey, you don't want to miss out on this deal. This is the sale of a lifetime. Um, or sometimes that the fear is that you've not made the right decision or the fear that there is no, no other perceived option. And so some of those things that we have in our mind um, in our heart that we feel are um, things that we are not sure of because of our limited position. Sometimes we feel that things may not come about and a lot of those things that we uh, we engage in that alter our faith are things that um, we can be impatient on. We can be impatient, impatient on waiting for the Lord on. <clears throat> um, give me one second. I um. Uh, so it's called the fat, because um, what happens is, as we listen to those voices whether it be audibly or in our head, that creates a, a space between us and the Father. And so what we have to do is, <clears throat> us the saints, get back to that place of hope. Um, and that's what the hat stands for, hope all things. I'm going to read uh, 1 Corinthians 13, 
chapter 13, verses 4 through 7. <clears throat> and it reads, Charity suffers long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up, does not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, not easily provoked, think of no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. And so our focus is on that hat, the hope of all things. Um, <clears throat> Jeremiah, it reads, Jeremiah 29, 11, it says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. So I've got a, uh, I've got quite a few scriptures that I want to share with you that the Lord gave me uh, in regards to His hope, and I want to uh, also before I do that expound on the uh, what I just read in First Corinthians thirteen four through seven. So in that instance, there when you're talking about charity, we're talking about love. We're talking about love, and <clears throat> one thing that the Lord showed me was that. Um, when um when the hope when the hope isn't there in the relationship the love can decrease um a lot of times you know we don't um we don't like to say that outwardly as far as when we're talking about our relationship with the lord because we know we love the lord and things um but our hearts affections when we let that fat get on the brain those faith altering thoughts <clears throat> it can turn our our affections our uh our pursuit another way <clears throat> and so god wants to remind us today that uh the love is still here the love is still here and nothing has changed with the Lord. And as Jeremiah said, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> let me read the scripture. So second, so second Samuel 22, verse 31, it says, as for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all them that trust in him. And I went on and I read Psalms 18 and 30. And it says the same thing. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all those that trust in him. So I wanted to go and look up the uh, definition because I really wanted to uh, expound on this so um, I could have an understanding. Um, I clearly did not know what a buckler was. I thought it's something that was something belt related. You know, when uh, the Lord gave me this, I was thinking it was something about securing you <clears throat> a whole different way. But so I, I looked up the definition. And so a buckler is a small round shield held by a handle at arm's length 
a shield worn on the left arm, one that shields and um, so when I when I read that and I, I understood the definition was I, it made me clear, quickly think about what's on the what's on the left side off center of your chest and that's your heart um it's like i'm missing some stuff here <laughs> give me one second thanks second One second, thanks. I apologize for this. saying sorry about that I want to share this other scripture that the Lord had given me on the buckler. And it is Proverbs 2 and 7. It reads, He layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous. He is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. And so, um, what the Lord showed me about that was that um, as we are walking this thing out with the Lord, as we're going, as we're growing in our faith walk, um, he'll shield that heart. He'll keep that heart protected. He'll cover you. He'll protect you. A lot of times it's the heart that where we grow faint. And then there's a um, there's a situation that comes about where there there's a presentation that now has us looking at things differently. Um, Proverbs two, um, two ten. Proverbs chapter two, verses ten and eleven. It reads, 
when wisdom entereth into thine heart and knowledge is pleasant unto thy soul, discretion shall preserve thee, understanding shall keep thee. So when we look at the word when, <clears throat> it, it, um, it notifies us that this requires action by us. And when we look at the word pleasant, that has to do with digestion. So it requires us to allow wisdom. We require to let wisdom enter into our heart. Digest the knowledge. Some things that we take in, meaning food wise, it might not be the um, the most appetizing thing to us, like um, like tomatoes, uh, beets, okra, uh, liver. Now, for me, these things are not the best on the palate. But I understand that these things are also good substance, good for your blood, <clears throat> um, cancer fighting properties, um, things to help with energy and inflammation. So while, although they may not taste the best as I'm making it a, a habit, a lifestyle, a discipline to take these things in, but it's for my good. And understanding that it's for my good and I'm I'm benefiting off benefiting off of these things is what helps me to get along the way as far as making this a, a normal practice. And so as then as it becomes a normal practice, it's it's way more palatable, it's uh easy to take in, it's easy to digest, and then it can get to a point where it could, you know, hey, be one of your uh, favorite dishes. And so we have to, um, we have to open our palates up. We have to open our palates up, uh, be willing to, uh, to, to digest those things that may not be um, sensually appealing if that makes sense. Uh, some things that we're going to do and that we've got to do is not always going to be about the feel good. Um, uh, uh, when you see those guys in the ring boxing, getting hit doesn't feel good. But when they hoist up that belt, the victory feels great. And so we have to get back into a practice where we will – we'll open ourselves up, meaning that we won't, when it comes to certain things, reduce or restrict God. Some things we don't want to uh, to let go of and let God come in and do a thing, but we'll allow ourselves to uh, be flattered or get into a place of despair or be compelled by things with way less ability than God to entreat us in and get in our thoughts and um, we go a different direction. <clears throat> Proverbs 2 and 12, it says, to deliver them from the way of the evil man that speaketh fraud with things. So the definition of fraud is habitually disposed to disobedience and opposition. The second definition is adverse. And so we have to understand anything that is opposite of the direction that the Lord is trying to take us, it's adverse. Any person who is <clears throat> trying to redirect you off the will of God, they're adverse. That's a fraud person. 
And um, God, um, he gave me these definitions because he wanted us to understand what we're dealing with. Because sometimes we feel, or we, I feel like we, we have a uh, tendency to think that the word of God is outdated. But all these things that I'm talking about, um, these scriptures and things here long ago, and the Lord knew it was going to be such a time as this. God does not desire for us to go backwards or to get into a place of hopelessness. His plan has always been to cover us. That's the uh, purpose even of um, him uh, talking about the buckler, you know, it's not by coincidence that the buckler is on the left side because a lot of times our faith will be reduced because we're so concerned about our heart, um, apprehension of, uh, of just going through some things. Uh, or what could happen, a worse outcome. But God has said, hey, I got you. As the scripture said, uh, <clears throat> Samuel 22 and 31 said, and Psalms 18 and 30 says, as for God, his ways, the word of the Lord is tried. He is a bucket to all those that trust in him. It didn't say some, it said all. It said all. Um, we've got to get to a point where we remove the fat. And, you know, that that can also translate into the natural. Excess fat is breaking you down. It's killing you. Uh, taking in those things that uh, cause store fat, even sugar carbs it affects the brain it affects the brain so god wants us to be removed of the fat the faith altering thoughts on our mind that we get back to a place of hope i'm talking to the saints i'm talking to the saints um <clears throat> Malachi 3 and 7, it says that if you return turn unto me, I will return unto you. Let me pull up that other one I sent you. <clears throat> Oftentimes we um, us as saints and believers, we um, when we know we may have stepped away from the Lord, may have um uh, got some fat on the brain, uh, made some decisions based off of um, persuasion, flattery, or despair. Um, that's when the enemy wants to really come in and really harp on that thing and beat you down for even having a mind to even consider anything opposite of God. Um, don't be tricked. Don't be tricked to stand out there and... Um, and getting the beat down because the only thing that's happening at that point is the the gap is continuing to widen the gap is continuing to widen your your mindset can be that you're so far from god <clears throat> so now you've got to commit to this over here that you've done you just putting on more fat you just putting on more fat um <clears throat> one thing about hope um, <clears throat> hope requires observation. Um, <clears throat> we don't hope for anything that's unattainable. Excuse me. Sorry about that. We don't hope for anything unattainable. <clears throat> um, meaning that there was an occasion of. of where there was a record of dependability or, or capability known. So 
we don't sit and hope for things that we can't grasp or we can't obtain. I don't know anybody who is hoping for a spaceship. I don't, I don't, you might do. Um, you know, I'm just talking about things that, uh, that, that we know to be true. You know, uh, things that we have seen that can be attained. Um, understanding that the track record of the Lord is impeccable. Um, sometimes we, we, um, <clears throat> if we don't have factuality about things, you know, we can get persuaded in things and that's what you call being, having a, a perception perceiving a thing to be good, to perceiving a, a thing that I can count on this thing, that I can bank on this thing, that this thing here is sure, but not truthfully knowing, but perceiving it. That's where we get the uh, the term of uh, false hope. You know, uh, even from a relationship standpoint, you know, maybe you've experienced a situation where you got into a relationship based off of the uh, the flattery or the persuasion, and it's, and even sometimes even uh, in a the midst of uh, despair, you know. But um, because of the fear that you're gonna miss something, that you need this, that there's no other way, and then you you get intruded in or you you get into this relationship, only to see those things not to come for, to fruition. Um, <clears throat> Understand this, um, when love goes elsewhere, so does the hope. I know that may, uh, that may sound a little harsh. Uh, we don't like to look at it like that sometimes, but that's the truth of the matter. You know, uh, <clears throat> you didn't got a, you know, didn't got a new boo, didn't got a new love. And so um, your heart would turn to the direction of that, that new love. But as Malachi 3 and 7 says, if you return unto me, I return unto you. And that's the desire that the Lord has for us. Um, <clears throat> it's, it's, it's not a, God is not a, trying to a, hold anything over your head. God is not going to receive you with a uh, I told you so spirit or treatment. The love ain't never changed. Um, and the Lord knows the plans and the thoughts that he has for us. Some things that we uh, get sway to uh, <clears throat> to do opposite of is because we don't want to take our hands off of things. We don't want to uh, just be honest with the Lord. Let the Lord can do wonders with your unbelief, but you got to say something. You got to say something. You got to confess it. You got to say, Lord, help me with this part. Help my unbelief. Help my unbelief. Um, one thing about God, <clears throat> God will uh, never leave us um, comfortless. Sometimes we want to put a rush on how God is doing things. Sometimes we feel that this is the season for God to do this thing. Um, but we've got to let God, we've got to let God do what God does best and make things come together. The Lord came that we would have life and have it more abundantly. So <clears throat> sometimes that requires clearing out some things so that we can get to 
that place where we're able to handle that abundance. But we've got to make a decision to not continue to be uh, swayed at times of despair or when you really get to um, really want that thing or you encounter somebody who who specializes in flattery, in fraudness, meaning create creating adversity between you and and your and your creator, your father, whom you know. The record is tried and true. Tried and true. That uh, we get back to that place and understanding how how we get back to that place. I'm going to give you some scriptures. Second Corinthians 10 and 5, it says, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. <clears throat> Romans 3 and 4, it says, let God be true and every man a liar. I'm going to reiterate, reiterate that. Let God be true and every man a liar. Even yourself. Even yourself. Because sometimes, <clears throat> sometimes the most toxic conversation we're having is with ourselves. Um, just being honest. I don't care how smart you think you are, how cute you think you are, how savvy you think you are, how logical you think you are. You can't outwit God. And you need to allow that to be applied to your living. Let God be true. Let God be true. Let God be true and every man lie you. Let God be true. Whatever you may think about yourself that's negative, it's a lie. You're a lie. Let that be. Let what God says be true. <clears throat> Isaiah 43 and 18, it says, Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Give yourself a break. Give yourself a break. Uh, give yourself a break. And even those who would uh, try to keep you in the past. Uh, sometimes you can have situations where within yourself, um, because the enemy knows how to get in that head and get in that ear and get you to uh, condemn yourself and you know, understanding where you might have came from, because everybody's testimony isn't the same. Some of us didn't just grow up in the church and walk this thing all the way out. Some of us came, you know, by way of a miracle, by way of a witness, by way of the Lord arresting or saving our lives. And so in the history leading up to that, sometimes we can get into situations where we're trying um things are popping up where we're reminded of those things in the past, whether it's done by ourselves or done by others. And uh, take a break on that. Take a break on that. Start remembering those former things. The past is the past. We are new creatures in the Lord. <clears throat> he said, behold, I make all things new. So let us walk in our newness. As we're walking in our newness, the fat, it burns off. It burns off. It burns off. Um, Philippians 3 and 13, it says, brethren, <clears throat> Paul, Apostle Paul says, brethren, I count not myself to have uh, apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind me, reaching forth into those things which are before me. Let us focus on the going ahead. 
let us focus on the going ahead. Um, I know before I came into the Lord, I I was definitely in a place of despair. I definitely was in a place of hopelessness. I definitely was in a place of just um, just undefined uh, course, just really not knowing where I was going to be, what my outcome was going to be, what my uh, future was going to be, whether I would live to, to see 40, to see 28, you know, and uh, so with that being said, we want to look ahead. We want to look ahead. We want to look ahead. Um, let us not keep continuing on the uh, the path that the Lord delivered us off of and that we understand where our hope comes from, where our help comes from. We have hope in the Lord because of what we have seen. I guarantee you, if Peter had gotten back on that water after the things that he saw going forward, I bet he would have moonwalked out there on that water. You know, that's why he sliced that joker's ear off. The Lord was like, hey, no, let me put that back on. You know, but uh, because that's the fact of the matter, uh, our hope is back based on the observation. So I encourage you to be mindful and remind yourself of the hope that you have, the hope that you've had in the Lord. Remind yourselves of the track record of the Lord. It's tried and true. Remind yourselves. <clears throat> because as the scripture says, It's the when, it's the doing. I'm sorry, I apologize, I thought I was on. It's the when, it's the doing. It's not always gonna be um, soothing to the palate, but it'll get there, it'll get there. Um, we've gotta be willing to receive the information to get those things that we want to receive we got to be able to uh, take it in, digest it, because some things will require us to make some changes. And it's not always what you want. Sometimes it's required to change, you know, your intake. But as you go along, it gets better. It gets easier. You see the benefits. You see the reward. You see the preparation. God hasn't forgot any of us at all we're still here in the midst of a, a pandemic and everything we're still here he's still keeping us he's still blessing us he still is giving us our opportunity every day and the thing is for god this is all about love it's all about love it's all about the relationship god is trying to show us that he loves us and that he is here with us and for us. That's what that buckler is about. Share that heart. Uh, part of that definition is said at arm's length. He'll share that heart if you're allowed. You gotta give him all of it though. We have to give him all of the heart, all of our heart. If we give him all of our heart, then we won't be moved by the flattery or the persuasion or the despair. Put on the hat, the hope all things. Uh, in the military, 
they call uh hat they call it the cover put your cover back on put your cover back on <clears throat> put your cover back on because all of that the fraud with man he's in line with the enemy he wants to kill steal and destroy uh, and suck up everything completely deplete you of your your hope let's get the fat off the brain as the scripture says you return unto me and i return unto you so the connection the, the connections are not broken in a sense of that they can't be realigned and that doesn't mean when i say that doesn't necessarily mean that i'm saying that everybody is backslidden and they're way off somewhere but what i'm saying is <clears throat> those places those areas that um you're not trusting god or you are choosing another source for hope to come through It's not it. It's not it. It's not going to stain. And there's not a source outside of God that's going to be better than what God can provide. And we're the saints of the most high. So let us be mindful. Of some of this stuff, you know, that we may have to go through to get to where we want to be. It's not necessarily going to feel good. But it necessarily taste good. But it's for our good. It's for our good. He knows the thoughts that he has towards us, that he should prosper us. And I don't mean just uh, prospering in your finances, but in your uh, in your health, in your soul, in your spirit, man. Because if we've got that internal health, if we've got that, all the external, it'll be like a cakewalk. It'll be like a cakewalk. That's when the Philippians 4 and 13, <clears throat> I can do all things through Christ who strengthen me, really goes to another level. Let us saints get back to a place of hope. Amen. <clears throat> so this uh, concludes the, uh, the message for today. I do apologize about all the technical difficulties. I... I sent my notes and things to my iPad and evidently it didn't pick up everything. So I do apologize. And I guarantee that um, when you see me next Sunday, it won't be this way. <clears throat> Again, I want to reiterate to you guys right now, Impact, we are doing virtual process of moving we're in our own building like i said we are in a state we are now walking ownership and um it requires hope and so i thank god even for our leader our house of the house our apostle khadija richardson uh because she has never wavered in her hope, she has never wavered in the vision. Um, ain't no fat on the brain when it comes to this ministry. And I thank God for that. So I just wanted to remind you, like I said, we'll be doing virtual until announced. Um, <clears throat> thanks again for tuning in. I do apologize again for the technical difficulties. And I uh, just want to just reiterate the fact that's faith altering thoughts, you know, things that we take in. Um, a lot of times um, in moments of despair or uh, being flattered or, you know, uh, persuaded, you know, um, I encourage you to not fall. Do not fall. Do not take those things on. Do not turn away from the Lord, 
that you put on your hat, put your cover on, hope all things. Um, <clears throat> understanding that um, if we return unto the Lord, he'll return unto us. The, the Lord, he has an expected end for us. Some things in the process of the hope process, some things that we're taking in on the knowledge uh, may require change and the change may not be the things that we want to do. It might not, um, it might not be appeasing to the senses, but I guarantee that if you keep walking this thing out, he's going to hold you up. He'll keep that heart upright. He'll keep you upright. If we keep walking this thing out, as we keep walking this thing out, easier things get done. <clears throat> I'm going to close in prayer. Father God, we just thank you right now, Lord. We thank you for this day, Father God, Lord. We thank you um, even for this word, Lord God. We thank you, Father God, Lord, that you uh, you have never left us nor forsaken us, Father God, Lord. Father God, uh, I just even thank you, Lord God, that you even still would um, send us an invitation and give us a... a just an a understanding that, hey, that you still love us and that you want us and that um, the true results, the true answer is within you and that all that other stuff is a sham. It is, um, it's adverse. It's opposite of you, Lord. And um, that with you, we win. And that's your ultimate goal for us, Lord. So we thank you right now for everything that you do, Lord. We thank you for continuing to love on us, Lord God. We thank you for continuing to keep us, Lord. Father God, I even ask you now, Lord, as we uh, we close the service, Father God, that you would uh, cover your people as they go forth on this week, Lord. I ask that you would keep them, Lord God. I ask that you would have them mindful, Lord God, to... Um, Get the fat off the brain, Lord, Father God, and to put back on the hat, Lord God, removing the uh, faith altering things and putting back on the hope, Father God, that you have given us, Father God, that you have uh, created and established by the uh, track record, Lord God. I ask, Lord God, that you would uh, even make the adjustments, Father God, make them easy, Lord God, make them easy for us, God, Lord, to just walk. Uh, back in a place of realigning with you, Father God, Lord, that we would even, Lord, uh, take the time just to get before your presence, Father God, Lord, and uh, just really truly have a conversation and be honest, Father God, with those things that are within our hearts, Father God, that we are concerned uh, that we may uh, have some unbelief, Father God, that we would... Um, we will come to you honestly, Father God, so that we can get um, the healing, Father God, and the hope restored, Father God, within us, Lord God. I thank you right now for everything that you continue to do for us, Lord God. Um, I thank you for continuing to keep us, Lord God. I thank you for just loving us the way that you do, Father God. It's like none other, Father God. Lord, um, I've not met a man or a woman, Father God, that loves like you do, Lord. So we just thank you right now. And it's your name, I pray, Jesus. Amen. Amen. See you next Sunday.